Okay, we're going to call this meeting to order at 6 o'clock. Just to catch you all up, normally the planning board meetings are not attended by so many people. Uh, I'm Beth Gershman, I'm the chair of the planning board, and these are the rest of the planning board. We can just quickly run down. Mary McClintock, I live on South Deerfield Road near the Grammar School. Jennifer Mullins, I live on Reeds Bridge Road. Joe Stavowski, Reeds Bridge Road. No, maybe it's Parsons Road. Alexis Federachenko, I am staff for the planning board, and I live in Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys talk a little louder? Yeah. But I couldn't hear you. We will not hear either of you. Oh, you can hear either M-O-E-B-I-U-S, Parsons Group. You're also welcome to come up closer. Yes. If you can't hear, if you're in the back row, there's seats right up here. Um. So let me reiterate, this is a regularly scheduled planning board meeting. This is not a public hearing. This is a planning board meeting in which we are deliberating um, the special permit application as submitted by Roaring Glen Farms. Um, <coughs> Anything more to say about that? Uh, we realized that it said in the recorder that this was a continuation of the public hearing. This is not a continuation of the public hearing. The public hearing was closed. We continue to accept written comments until today at 5 o'clock, which we received quite a lot of. Thank you all for submitting your comments. Um, but what's going to be happening tonight is we're going to take up our regular order of business for a few agenda items, but we've got stuff to do on your behalf. And um, then we're going to be discussing the site plan review application. And we are going to be directing questions about that for clarification to Lisa and John. We're not here yet. Um, uh, there's going to be a point in time where we're going to be able to open up the floor to people who are here to ask uh, new questions or to submit new comments on this. Does every, anybody have anything to add to that? Okay. Um, so just that there is some confusion. We are using Conway's bylaw. Just for reference, the majority of the state voted for marijuana. The majority of the people in Conway voted for marijuana. And with two thirds of the people voted for this bylaw. And generally, in a democracy, the majority rules. So we're, we're using the document that was presented to you at town meeting and was approved by the attorney general, not the state bylaw. There are sections of state bylaw that are not in our bylaw. We only address some of the areas that we thought were critical. So I know that one of the areas, like, is the uh, separation from the Church of God. This document is slightly different than the state document, so be sure you're referring to this document rather than the state law. Can you ask questions? Uh, you can't ask questions yet. You know, I think just a quick question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess we read the newspaper, but we uh -huh. finally read on the website, our website, that this was a continuation of the public hearing. Yeah. The word continuation of the public hearing might have come up because <coughs> we had a previously scheduled public hearing on December 17th that we had to, that we, because of the winter storm, we you opened it. You were there? No, no, we opened it, we closed it, we continued it to December 19th. So that's where the word continuation should have appeared on our website, not as pertaining to our previous public hearing. So um, we're working with a lot of information. We have received a lot of information about this application, people's uh, thoughts about it, people's concerns about it. And we, again, as Joe said, we are, we are discussing this piece by piece as a planning board going through the bylaw, the, the Conway bylaw. Um, yeah. you want to talk about so that? I, I mean, basically, that's, that is just like you don't go to, um, you don't go to the select board and ask them to come and inspect your restaurant. Um, the Board of Health does that. The planning board has certain things that we do. And what we do is we review special permit applications, make decisions on special permit applications based on Conway zoning bylaw. Not, and not based on, we're not regulating based on state law, we're based on Conway's zoning bylaw. 
So that's what we're going to focus on. And just wanted to be yeah, clear about that. So there may be things that people have, you know, I, I guess we can say, I mean, I guess I would yeah. say, people have brought up a number of issues that are not pertinent to our zoning bylaw and not cannot be part of our deliberation nor are part of our making a decision. We can make a decision based on how the application relates to our bylaw. We can't make a decision based on how on other issues. For example, there's been a people have raised the issue of why isn't um, this considered agriculture and this just like farming. This is an issue that's been raised up. That's a state law thing that has nothing to do with our zoning bylaw. So we can't have an opinion. We, we may have individual opinions about that, but we can't make it, base a decision on something like that. So anything that's not within our bylaw isn't pertinent to us. I guess we should go to our regular meeting. Yeah, let, let, we're going to go to our regular meeting for a little while because we, again, we got stuff to do. So we're going to review and approve the minutes of uh, both December 17th and 19th. Um, they're stapled together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good job, Alexis. Thank you, Alexis. Anybody have any um, comments? I make a motion to approve the minutes of December 17th. Second. Only oh, because I wrote them. But <laughs> okay, actually, I, can't. I, I was not here. Yeah, you weren't there. Um, Hi, I was there. I can second it. Okay. Everybody? Hi. Who's there? Hi. 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 Special permit application from Vertex Power Assets Wireless Tower proposed for uh, off of Deerfield Road, the South, South, Deerfield. South Deerfield Road, sorry. Um, and um, we have two pieces to talk about with this. One is that we have received this um, uh, application on December 20th, and we uh, started looking for a uh, uh, peer review consultant. I followed up on a couple of different people. We got we got letters back from two of them. One is this guy, Walter Cooper. Um, I spoke to him on the phone. He said that he um, is in the middle of moving <laughs> to New York City, but he also lives in Pittsfield, and he does he he was a little concerned that he might not have time to do this. Um, he sent back a letter with very a lot of details about what he do for the scope of work on the peer review, and he said he'd bill at an hour rate of 125. Um, if he had to appear as an expert witness, he'd bill at two times the standard rate. He'd reimburse. He'd ask us for reimbursement for authorized travel and living costs, postage, printing, things like that. Um, and he did not give me a sense of how long this sort of thing would take. And then I heard back from Fred Goldstein, and he has already reviewed applications in New Hampshire for this uh, organization, for, for this applicant, and um, also for Vermont. Um, he said his, he typically takes about 15 hours, not to exceed 15 hours, and he uh, would consult for 220 an hour. He, he was much less detailed than Walter Cooper. But he also didn't indicate, Mr. Cooper indicated he had like some time constraints. This guy, no time constraints. And just a resume, a CV, or some, how did we you could, find out about it? I found out about it through the um, applicant. Um, just one other piece of information. <coughs> I checked with the building commissioner, mm -hmm. and he is okay with using a set of sign engineering drawings okay. for the power construction. Okay. So okay. I'm providing the applicant can provide those. We do not need a consultant for the structural integrity of the tower. No, we don't. The building commissioner will take care of that. So, um, uh, just to so Mr. Cooper did say that often he does this work remotely. He doesn't usually have to be on site. <coughs> so I have a sense of this. We need somebody. We need to decide. Both of these would be um, acceptable by the applicant. 
Um, if you want, I could call the um, people he's worked for and ask them for more information. Do you want me to do that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want a reference? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll get references on these, but do you have a sense of... We don't pay for this. The applicant pays for this. Yes. The town doesn't pay for this. The <coughs> so... I mean, yes, I care. How much do I care? Right. Yeah, I mean, maybe just a okay. reference from each. For each. He was quite upset by the seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah, and the initial the initial Well that included the structural analysis. You should be quite pleased with this. Yeah, so either one would go with. Um so either, either one of them I think would be acceptable. All right, I'll get it. And then the next thing to do is to set a date for this for the um, special permit here. Uh so they applied December 20th, we have the 65 days. Um, we were thinking that rather than go, we think that, I'm thinking that this is, we're gonna be busy through January. Um, uh, the applicant can't come to February 6th meeting. So what, what if we set a, a, a special permit public hearing for February 13th, which is not our usual day, with a snow date of our usual day of the 20th. Does anybody have a conflict? Is that okay with everybody? No, it's fine. Okay, all right, let's do and that. Was this supposed to be joint with ZBA? Do we need to ask Mark Silverman? Mark, to ask Mark Silverman? So 13 work. Funny you just mentioned that. The only, the only issue in terms of scheduling is we have to make sure all three of our members are available. All three? Your yes. are here, I think. <laughs> I don't know if John's here. John's not here. So I, I put out a, a, a query to them, so we can the the but not not any specific dates. So that's okay. that's well, so if we're going to have a joint hearing, we have to make sure we all can make it. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything. We, we don't have a lot of flexibility. We should probably pick the date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it can't be a joint hearing, then so we will. Then we okay. would have to schedule a separate hearing. Sure. I mean, we were just trying for a joint hearing just for like ease of. Right. Well, he, he had said that too. Um, but there's still the balloon test and things like that, right? The balloon test has to be scheduled, but we're going to address that with you, yeah? With Fran, when Fran okay. is going to come All right. and speak yeah. to that. Um, the next meeting. Yeah. So we, yeah, so we have to, we have to schedule the balloon test. We have to advertise the balloon test. Um, That's something would be great if it could be done. So, I mean, I don't know how long the balloon stays there, but that would be tantamount to a site Four visit. hours it stays there. But and it means on, on the particular day that the zoning board needs to be able to see that also. They, they take to, a lot of photos, they too. They take a lot of photos. Yeah, yes, no, it's good to be able yeah, to run around you know, and look it, at them. Well, so if you have a site visit, you know, essentially that's what would amount to. Mm -hmm. Well, except that with the balloon test, it's going to be not being at the site, it's going to be being all around the site to see right. what the visibility, you know, like where, right. what can you see? Right. What can you see? Again, something if that can be coordinated, it would be really important, I think. Um, to, just for reference, the, the cell tower location is on the PLAS property, or PLAS. It's the first driveway in Conway on the left-hand side as you're coming up from Deerfield. It's that crazy, that steep crazy driveway, long driveway goes up on top of the hill. Oh, okay. It's right on the, yeah. right on the Conway South Deerfield block. Did somebody oh. mention Valentine's Day? No, uh, it's the 14th. Are so you talking about a meeting on the 13th? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's this is a special permit. We have a separate I special know. permit application for the cell tower. There's, so we're talking about having two thirds of the ZBA here. Uh, oh yeah, he's a ZBA. Oh, you're ZBA. So we're talking about a public hearing related to that. So 13th, I just it would be the February 13th. And the applicant was hoping we could do a joint ZBA and and. Uh, Planning. planning board meeting. If we can't do it, we can't do it. But and actually, that was for the applicant's convenience anyway. So <coughs> exactly. So we try it. Yeah. And Gary, we're trying to stick within the 65 day. I'm sorry. There's a 65 day window, window mm -hmm. from when they apply, and this applicant is uh, particularly attuned. Yeah, so we're, we're going to get the public hearing in within the next few days. That's fine. Okay, I just want to put it in my calendar. Okay. All right. So 13th with the snow date of the 20th. With the snow date of the 20th. Oh. Any other questions? Nine or something? Did you, you say that works? 
That would work for me. So yes, February 13th you. was the snow date of the 20th? 7 to 9 p.m. And what about the balloon? Are we going to try to do the balloon? Or we're yeah. going to wait for 7 o'clock here. Here. Okay. Got to reserve this one. Um, How soon the before the 65 days are up is that? Well, the 20th puts it to like within a few days of the 65 days. Okay. Two months and five days. So. December, January so we're 20th, hoping. February 20th, February 25th. Yeah, that gets, that gets a little dicey otherwise. Um, and the balloon test has to be noticed in the paper, and we can also use um, the calling system that the town has to notice people about it. The reverse 911. Reverse 911. Mm -hmm. So that as many people as possible are aware of when it would happen. Uh, are you okay with all that? Then? Yeah. You're done with that? It's a, it looks like it's a Okay, we have one more thing to take up that I want to uh, get to before we start talking about the um, special permit application for Warren Glen Farms, which is the annual report for spring town meeting. So, one of the things we have to do is write an annual report. I'm sure everyone reads our annual report, don't you? <laughs> Everyone reads it again. It's part of the town report before town meeting. Anyway, somebody has to do it. I did it the last two years. <laughs> to do it. Mary, yeah, do you have time to do it? <laughs> no, she doesn't have time to do it. Anybody want to learn how to do it? It's so much fun. I think this is a great opportunity for mentoring. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being nominated? <laughs> yes. I haven't even been on for a year. Is it really right for me to I mean I'm happy to try. Yes, you know? well it's I it's can, it's really not challenging. It's really it's take not. it's really taking the previous annual report. And, and looking at kinds of stuff, it. and then updating <laughs> changing it, and it for 19. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's like what we did. Looking what through the agendas and yeah, yeah. the things we addressed. Okay. It's not. It is not a big deal. When is it due? It's not a big deal. I don't know when it's due. When's it due? Is it here town Tom, government? Tom's not here. <laughs> When's town meeting? Oh, it's May. Yeah. It's, it's more like in February. It's like in February, I think. It's like in February. It's like end of February. It's like mid February. Sure, mid -February. I'll help you. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll help you. Oh, okay. Mid February. So. Mid -February. Okay, that's great. Thank you for All right. So the rest of our agenda, we're just going to push it. So <laughs> we're going to talk about. All right. We're going to start um, taking up the special permit application that we, we received from Roaring Glen Farms, and we're going to go to group. Step by step through our buying law. We have copies. Of, we have copies. We have a few copies, but now I'm wondering if I should make a lot more. Of what? The buying? I have an extra one because I can take. I have, I have another computer. Oh, do I? I don't have no, because that wasn't. You need one there? I have one. I have one. I have, have mine on my computer. Is there anyone on the planning board need a copy? Mm -hmm. I got okay. two here. Yeah, I have two more. Here. Okay. Um, so, do you want me to take the lead here? Yeah. Uh, the first one is the special permit authority and site plan review. That is the planning board by our bylaw. Um, there is a clause in there that allows us to waive strict compliance to requirements set forth in section 11.4 and 11.5, which is the area where most of you are concerned. 11.4b, the distance between any marijuana establishment uh, or other, loca other location where children congregate shall be measured in a straight line without regard to intervening structures from the closest property line of any existing places where ch um, children congregate to the building or parking area of the marijuana establishment, which is different than the state law. Mm -hmm. The reason for that in our mind, I think when we when we passed this, if if Howard Boyden wanted to do this, and you were all in favor of it, he would have to carve out a piece of land to get 500 feet away because his boundary would be right near the school. It seems to me it makes to us it makes more sense to just in his condition say he can't locate it within 500 feet of the school, so he could maybe go on the other side of the barn or something and plant a couple acres of marijuana. So, um, so that is what we've used for this application. And based on that, it appears to me that it complies. The building is 500 plus or minus feet 
from your from the church property line, and the fence, the dry wire fence, is 450 feet. So uh, it only is required to be 200 feet away by our bylaw. The fence the marijuana growing area, but it's, it's 450. So it appears to me that he's complied with that, which is different than his original proposal, but it looks like the last um, document seems to comply. So know? this is, what? you so, have a question? So this is, so your, I have a, I have some questions or different viewpoints. So okay. are you, you expressing your viewpoint, the way it sounds? I'm, I'm reading the bylaw, yeah, and, and then I'm telling you the measurements that I did from the drawing. Okay, the measurements you did, okay. I measured on the drawing from the uh, boundary with the church, which is on the westerly side of the road, to where the fence line is, and measured about 450 feet. Did you know? Right. And, okay, yeah. so yeah. You, we, we're gonna accept questions from you. This is our deliberation oh. amongst yeah. ourselves. So, um, the thing that I, um, so appreciate getting the measurements, the thing that I was looking at in looking at the plot plan was um, what seems to be the area that um, Whaley Glen Road, um, Roaring Brook Road, and there's the pond and then there's the house, mm -hmm. and that corner on the, up to the edge of the pond towards the house is not part of the Roaring Glen Farm property. And what property, and the way I was using the um, information I saw was that it, that that property line is a property line that is, relates to the church property. And if that's the case. As far as I know, the church only owns on the westerly side of the road. No. What? No. Can you, can you, okay, so we're going to ask you directly. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> so, um, we have some, we guess we have a few questions about the property that the church owns. Okay. Um, do we want to bring up um, the there's a There's a deed on file hmm. with John Moore from 2016. It seems to imply that he bought the swimming the swimming pond parcel right. from the church. Yeah, but that's that's not that's not that parcel number two. That's separate from that. So we all, we we had the right of way an easement from a parcel number two that we had the right of way to park anywhere in the area from the second entrance from Rowan Brook once you go into the to this this area there. And there's also a big field for any kind of entertainment that our church and our youth and our kids want. Okay. And um, from from the uh, uh, from the corner with the lot uh, where the marijuana field is going to be integrated, all the way into even into our cabbies is is well beyond 500 feet. So okay, wait, before we continue, I just want to say if we're gonna uh, when we recognize people, can you say your name and yeah. address for the minutes? And um, uh, so specifically, uh, which is, in, in my perspective, an easement is not your property line. An easement is different than your property line. So we have a right of way and easement, you know, to go in there any time that, that we but would the, like but to that's use. But that's still not your, that's not, an easement is not your property. It's an easement is over someone else's property. Right, but you have the right of way. And you have the right any. of way. Yeah, so, I, I, yes, I hear that. And so it makes it kind of like both of our, uh, in a way, kind of like. Not, not, not exactly. Because an easement doesn't, doesn't, doesn't mean that the property owner has given up their property rights. You don't put taxes on it. Well, we don't pay taxes, period. Well, we right. Right. <laughs> right. We have one yeah. would not pay taxes the, on the, the, question that I'm, the question I have is not about the parking area. The question I have is about the property that is to the west, the northwest of the pond, that is on the corner of Whaley Glen Road and Roaring Brook Road. There's, there's a pond and there's this property there. And in the, the, the exhibit, whatever it is, of the, you know, the drawing of, of this area, it, that's um, from 2013, it shows that as being owned by the church, the, um, 
General Assembly of the Church of God in the Northeast that is not owned by Roaring Glen Farm owners. And if that prop and that property line, and I don't know, maybe there's something different in 2016 that I don't have, but in that property line, the property line is practically next to the house. And so that that's the question I have about it. So this may be what? Are you talking about the pond parcel? Yes. That parcel, I believe, was sold by the church in 2016. Well, does anybody have a copy of that deed showing that property, new property line? Because the property line that we have does not show that. The property uh, line for, uh, in the application. The map that you have is Dorothy Osterman's map. John did not own it. The swing pond no, lot at that, that time. That used to be ours. He sold it to us. Well, but if that if you look at the application, if you look at the application, um, he, I believe John only yeah, applied. Yeah, yeah. The application is for that bigger lot, 56 acres, but he also owns the swimming pool lot. Yeah, so that's new information to me. That that do we have that? Do we have that somewhere? Um, Carlos, the, the reason we're concerned, you also have done a property transfer by donation to a group in Indiana, and it appears you transferred the parcel too. And so we're confused. It, did you? No, no, we, we just we just sold them the pond, the, the pond. That's no, it. No. The pond. Well, you, <coughs> pond. So you sold the pond to John and Lisa. In, we're referencing in early December that there was a transfer of property from. We noticed in the paper, it's in the paper, a transfer of the property from the Church of God mm -hmm. to an Indiana church. Anderson, Indiana is our overseer for, for okay. the Churches of God. So in New England area, we have like 10 churches all around New England. Mm -hmm. but this is globally. We have like over seven or so, 8,000 churches all over the world. So the property, this property in particular, regardless of the the actual lines are now they're now owned by someone other than you the New England Church of God region owns it now and in part together with the Church of God bands and then with our we are uh, they are umbrella uh, mother church like our, so what we're trying we, to establish we it appears from my read that two people own the swimming parcel mm -hmm. you transferred it to the people in Indiana and John and Lisa say they bought it in 2016. There can't be two owners for that part. No, you, you're getting two things mixed up. The pond is one thing, we sold it in the pond. We didn't sell them the rights of the parcel that it goes into the parking lot from Roy Brook Road into his property and all that in there into a softball field that is there. And uh, right next to that underneath there, there's a big field and right next to that, that's where he's, he wants to be Put his marijuana field, it's like but further you're, down Lauren, it's, yeah, it's it's as away yeah, from the park. The it's a separate. That's right. 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 Different. That's different. That's different. That's different. Right. 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 Yeah. right. So this is where, where our children are going to be congregating and, and and all that stuff. So okay. this is part of that. It says right. it on your bylaws as well. So in in my understanding of research, an easement on a piece of property runs with the deed. It it doesn't matter who sells what to who. It's an easement that ran with the with the deed to the land. Yes. Yes. Right. And again, in, in my understanding and research, it, it it doesn't negate the property rights of the property owner. It sure does. Your, how? We believe it's a separate it's, property. I'm sorry. We, we believe it's, it's a separate property right. We, we believe it's putting a burden on a the burden property. On the we're property. trying to it ascertain it if it's putting a burden on the when, property when that owner. when that easement was issued. I don't believe the intent was to stop somebody from farming on that parcel. Can I make it some quick suggestion? Why not ask town council? I mean, well, we would. Right. Right. Yes. Right. We're going to right. So so yeah. So basically, what we need to ask town council is we need to see we need to see what the actual property lines are no. and who owns them of that area that is at the corner of Whaley Glen Road and Roaring Brook Road, and that in or doesn't include that pond so we need to see that documentation um, because if it's owned by the church then that puts the property line of the church closer to the proposed use area 
And if it's not, then it doesn't. But that's a, in our ability to decide about, you know, we have to decide is the is the church, is the camp area a place that children congregate? We have to decide that, and we have to decide, um, you know, if that's if we do decide that, and then it needs to be 500 feet away from the marijuana establishment, then we have to know that information of like where those properties are. Okay. So we so need let's talk, let's take that part off the 500 feet part. I mean the the children congregating part. Um, yeah, we could. Yeah. So, but anyway, starting the list to ask town yeah. council. Yeah, we got it. That's that is um, because that's where I was. I started like, what what property line are we talking about? Yeah. And we can ask town council about easements and property lines. Mm -hmm. And is there is there does the easement that area um, qualify as quote unquote the equivalent of a property line? Or not? Would, would okay. you mind if we submitted something? I know the five o'clock limit, but something about that. About. If there's information that you have that's pertinent, that is. Well, I don't have it, got, I have it yet, but I could get, I could read the deed, and we could hire somebody to look at it too, and submit something. Well, well that's what the council's going to do. Yeah, we'll have to. Might, right. um, okay. So there's actually two questions in my mind: Who owns the swimming bar stuff, <laughs> and what to do with the easement? Right. right. Yeah, those are the two, two questions. Those are the two just questions. on section B. Yeah. Right. So we're still on section B. Those are two questions for section so B. So let's let's all of us talk about um, the question about um, whether this meets the criteria for uh, having to be located within nothing could be located within five hundred feet of any existing public, parochial, or private school, kindergarten, state approved daycare center, or other locations where children congregate. So let's talk about that a little bit ourselves. There's an example in the um, state guidelines. For instance, it says an ice cream parlor is, it, or ice cream stand is not a place where children congregate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, so there's this, this line that has to be drawn in the sand. What, what defines children congregating? Um, I've been saying we should use the word assemble because assemble seems to have the connotation of some purpose. You, know? you, you assemble uh, for, it's a stronger word than congregate. Congregate can be sort of spontaneous. Whereas assemble seems to have more of a purpose. But nonetheless, we're struggling with, we, we ask them for information. Um, that I think the truth is that the, the area has been pretty much closed and they have a dream to open it again, but it it currently is not functioning as uh, an active it is place. Actually, it is. So, Joe, that is different from the information they presented. They presented information that they had, that they're licensed as a, as a conference center and that they had a couple of events there this fall. Mm -hmm. So it is being used now. I, I think it's very recent that it's been reused, but that, um, what I saw, in the um, the letter from Angela um, said that it was that it had been used this that summer. it has been used once in, uh, a few times a few times yeah a few times throughout the summer so um, and what it, and also uh, also uh, as a church organization you can't just we draw the word con congregate because that's what we do and that's who we are. You know, well, we're not just an assembly, so that's we are a congregation, right. you know, right. and, and we have, uh, you know, 10, 11 churches are going to come and congregate there all the time, you know, by, uh, I said the last time we're here that by April of this year, we will open up uh, at least two or three more cabins so we can have sleepovers in there, uh, and uh, oh, we got all the permits already uh, ongoing, you know, ready to, to do the work on them, so... We yeah. will have uh, people like stay overnight there by April, for sure. So, so I, can we make the comment about? Yeah. If, if in fact you don't own the swimming pool parcel, then I believe that the building that they're constructing, which is the, the um, pole, not the pole building, but the the hoop, yeah. hoop sheds, okay. are 500 feet from your boundary, so it complies with our bylaws. But so it, it's almost a mute point as to whether. I, think, I, I don't think you're 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 getting the. the it's about the easement. Right. 
Yes. I don't think you get in the where is that he owns. He, we sold them the pond. We don't get the question is not the pond area. The it's question the easement. is is right in front of our entrance. I don't know if you ever been to to our campgrounds. Right in our, at our campgrounds and the entrance. Right across from that, there's an entrance from Mr. Moore's property. In there, we have the right of way. That's called parcel number two. We have the right of way to go in there and park all our, all our cars in there. And then if you go down even more, it's a big field that we are allowed to do entertainment and any kind of thing that we want in there at any time. Okay. So, um, so I think you're gonna probably have to make sure that you measure the right in the right area from the point of this marijuana field where it's gonna be all the way to through that area. So, so that's that's what we're talking about. I just want to reiterate for us that the intention of the <coughs> state law and the bylaw is to keep a 500 foot um, distance from any existing place, and they name specifically these things: the schools, daycare centers, and locations where children congregate. I think I find it kind of interesting they didn't name camps, but they chose not to name camps. I find it interesting they didn't name churches, synagogues, places of worship, but they didn't. They didn't in the state law. Um, and, in and in our bylaw, we, we added the we, places children. We added the word where children congregate um, to our bylaw. Um, and for me, I think the question that comes down to is like the question of how often, how regularly. If you had a party, and you had kids coming to the party and you had a celebration there, that wouldn't be where children were congregating. It was just like we had a party at our house and kids were there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the same thing to me as a place where people are, kids are regularly showing up. And I think the intention of both our bylaw and the state bylaw is to regularly showing up. Peace. Not that kids are there passing through or occasionally or whatever, it's that they're there. It feels to me like even on a on a daily ba on a daily basis is what this is what this language is like. That's where I'm at with this right this moment. And does a parking lot count as a place for congregation? No. I don't uh, know. So I think a parking lot is where you park and then you get out of your car. It's the ball field that's the place you come. So I'm, I'm confused for me, why people keep bringing this up as a vault. It's not. It's uh, so we and we need to get right we need to get clarity about the easement question. We can't we can't really say any more about. And I just that. want to clarify: we're not just going to be there just once in a while. We are going to be open for business, and this is going to be our business that we are going to be able to rent yeah. it out to anybody any given time throughout the whole year. So you're gonna see the people there all the time. Not, not like it's been I, I wish you, for the I past few years. I wish you every success I do. But what we're struggling with right now is this whole question of existing. Mm -hmm. Existing. And That's so, and, and for me with existing, um, I, I don't know if ex existing doesn't, doesn't existing mean a certain period of time. It seems like they, they have a license to um, be a conference center. Mm -hmm. So if they, you know, February vacation wanted to have like kids skiing time at the conference center, they could do that. Um, that, so to me, having a conference center license, having had at least um, one or two events this fall, mm -hmm. to me seems like existing. And conference center to me means any age group and that could include children. So that you could have, I mean, I was an outdoor leader and I worked with groups of kids and we, you know, used conference center places um, with groups of kids. Right. So that, to me, um, to me, it reaches the level of qualifying as a place for children congregate because we don't have the, and that it, and that it, it, because we don't have that it has to be X number of times and we don't have the existing I mean, if they didn't have a conference center license and they hadn't had any things and they're saying in the next year or two we're planning on doing this, they wouldn't be existing. Okay. But to me, they seem, it seems like existing. So, do we have any other specific we, questions? Is this, we're going to have questions and comments okay. later. Yep, For folks who came in later, what's happening is this isn't a public hearing. There was confusion. This was not a continuation of the public hearing. 
that the public hearing got closed. This is a regular planning board meeting where we're discussing and deliberating. There will be a time for new questions and comments. We've received a whole bunch of comments. We're going to take those into consideration. There will be a time for new questions and comments. And right now we are in, in some situations asking for clarifying information from specific people, but we're not opening up to a general question. So save your hand. Thank you. So let's move along to uh, D, so 11.4D, which is shall not be located within 200 feet from any existing residential use. So it seems like the permit application meets the guideline. Yeah. Again, it's measured to the right. parking area or building. Mm -hmm. And then 11.5, um, this is where we have uh, looked at um, buffering, odor control, noise, outdoor lighting, parking, access to the site from public roads, hazardous materials and landscaping and buildings. The, one of the questions that I had was in section C about okay. site screening and in the application that that there's it says rear and side property line, I guess the front doesn't have to be. Uh -huh. Whatever's rear and side. Right. So be screened from neighboring residential educational track or recreational uses of property. Um, and list <coughs> possibilities of screening which includes planting and I think that in the application they said that the existing trees and shrubs um, provide, you know, are, it could be other or appropriate screening, screening that they're adequate. So it, that's something that I think maybe in the site, the, you know, the, uh -huh. if, the, if the intention of this is that it's that you're, it's not visible, then does it does it do the job? Does does that uh, uh, current trees and stuff do the job. And mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure about that because I have, I guess I have to look at it. But Based on the drawing, there is a lot of trees, but I guess we'll get that clarified when we do the site visit. And then, um, would we then have to write as an order of condition that, um, those trees would have to stay there? Yes. <laughs> those trees would have to stay there or be replanted? All right. Yeah, that maintain that. Right. If, we, if we were going to, if we were going to approve it, one of the conditions would have to be that <coughs> the site screening would maintain, because it's not like, right. and that would be true whether it was, there was no site screening in the other point. That would have to be this size, five feet at least, or other appropriate, or other appropriate screening. Okay. All right. So that would be Anybody have any other thoughts on that? So you want to go on to lighting and security, or you want to go to yeah. Was it, uh, We skipped over A, dimensional requirements. Step back 25 feet. Step back 25 feet. So for outdoor, so lots of things, plus for outdoor cultivation, a minimum setback clearance from any property line of 25 feet shall be required. And that was met. That's met. That's met. Um, MB is we, we can check it. MB is map. Parking and loading requirements are map. Um, lighting and security. Let's pick up lighting and security. I have, I have some thoughts. Okay. Let's hear it. Um, during the public hearing, we saw a, a sort of preliminary, what I think was described as a preliminary security plan, and we haven't seen a final security plan or a lighting plan and one of the questions I have is what the role of the planning board is in terms of security. It seems like we have a clear role in terms of lighting but in terms of the what the CCC is um, re requiring um, that might you know it's like there's a section called 500.1102 alternate security provisions where they where the applicant submits plans for alternate security provisions to the CCC then the CCC sends it to the police chief who has 30 days to say whether or not they are adequate and then the CCC decides whether to approve the alternate security plans so in terms of us it seems like if we were to grant a special permit we would need to have a condition that the police chief and the CCC have approved the alternate security yeah. provision so that would be something 
but in terms of a lighting plan, the first sentence of the V is maintained at, lighting maintained at a minimum lumen to ensure adequate visibility on the property to ensure public safety. And so that's, um, and light standards may not exceed X amount and be shielded and all that. I don't think we have any information about lighting. Um, in the, I don't remember seeing any information. I believe that the applicant said that they were going to use infrared cameras, mm -hmm. so there would be no lighting except possibly under an alarm condition. Well, the, but uh, this was, um, the, I, yes, the, they were talking about using like heat sensing for the cameras, the security light fence the cameras, fence. but then there's lighting around like the buildings and around the area, you know, like lighting that, and there's there are all kinds of cameras being discussed, but I didn't see anything about lighting. And I know there were concerns about not too much lighting, and because one of the requirements is it has to be shielded from abutting property, but but it's like I don't know if we know do we do we have the information about yes. Um, in the minutes, it says John stated that the site will use natural lighting and that any supplemental lighting will be minor usage of LEDs. That was for growing purposes, not for, um, that's like, so it's not going to be <coughs> like grow lighting, but it, in terms of, so I don't know, that, is that a question? That and then think? I have, Beth asked for clarification that there is no lighting along the property or fence lines. John said no lighting in these areas is currently in the plan, but if the planning board wants to see lighting, this could be accommodated with suggestions from the police chief. Okay. All right, so that would be something. General comment, I'm, I'm from my end, this is a fairly incomplete plan. Yeah. When you look at the one for the cell tower, <laughs> you're going to be amazed how much information. We really do need to get a sort of a final document from John and Lisa. Mm -hmm. After, after, I think what happened here, we combined the site plan review, which was sort of a give and take between the audience and the applicant, with the special permit process. So that it appears they, if, I remember going to their first meeting, and they were talking about 300 plans. Right. Now they're talking about 3,000 plans. Mm -hmm. So it's a moving target. And at some point, we have to nail it down uh, if we're going to continue down this process. Mm -hmm. So I think... I think and lighting is part of that. And getting a, is part of well, that. I don't think we could write an order of conditions if we wanted to about the lighting, because I, I don't know what to say other than there's a virtual fence. We need a specification from John or from, from the security people. So well, and around the, and there's the, the, the virtual fence is the, the, like the heat sensing cameras, but, um, Right, is there lighting around the buildings? What's the lighting plan around the buildings? I mean, I, I mean, I just think about the farm I worked on when I was 21, and there were lights around the barn, there were lights around the building, and um, yeah, what, are the, what kind of lights are those? You know, because if there's work that needs to be done in the dark, or if there's, if, you know, beside, and it's about it's just say, ensuring public safety. So that's that would be a question: is the lighting plan? For the, and not just the certificate. So I'm going to actually ask um, John or Lisa a question at this moment to clarify for us. Um, I'm wondering, is there a, uh, the, is there a security plan narrative? I mean, what, what we had at the public hearing was, um, you know, a, a slide about the cameras and the, the fencing, but is there a narrative for the alternative security plan that you're going to be submitting to the state? We haven't gotten to that stage with the CCC yet. Okay. We, uh, we understand that um, between the provisional license and the final license is when the CCC requires the security plan to be finalized. So, and in terms of the licensing, do you know where you are in this process in terms of the provisional licensing? No one does. Okay. No. no one does until two days before they have a public meeting. Okay. All right. That's All right. it. So right now your license has been accepted. No, the application. The application, the application. has been accepted. I mean, the application <coughs> has been accepted. But the next step hasn't been scheduled yet. No. Okay. We've been waiting by a year. Yeah. Is this the state level we're talking about? Mm -hmm. This is the Cannabis Control Commission who controls the licensing for this. And the security. And, you know. and, and uh, the money. But what you're proposing is an alternate system which has to be 
recommended by the police chief, is that correct? Yeah. Just the, so just the tri wire fencing. That's and, and the camera system? No. That's not ultimate. <clears throat> that's part of their requirements. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so, so we when we would get so this final plan that would be useful for us to have to be able to make our decisions with um, won't be ready yet until like the final security plan or the like okay the, keep getting back to the whole chicken and egg issue of <clears throat> what the town when the town makes you know when the planning board makes decisions and when the CCC makes decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, well, okay. Um, Do we have any more questions about this from us? No? Yeah. About lighting and security? Do you want to go um, back have, to where? I have one sort of related question. I think early on you said you would have guards for like the six week going. Is that out now or is that mm -hmm. so? There, be, there will be no guards, just the, just the alarm system and just the fence. 24 7 monitoring. And the alarm system goes, the notification goes to a private security company and then it goes to the state police? I think our security guy answered that. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is, how, how it works out. Okay. But it doesn't go here to the town. It doesn't go to dispatch, it goes to, to the state. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, we have to wait for them to respond. Okay. 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 I think I'll just uh, E, noise and odors. Um, yeah, is, is the Board of Health here? I understand the Board of Health has some jurisdiction on Well, she was odors. she was at the public hearing. Right. Mario was Mary right. Murray was here from the public from the Board of Health and addressed the odor concern, which is very Right. I mean, it, I mean, basically, any special permit would need to include conditions about mitigating orders. I mean, what our bylaw says is, outdoor marijuana cultivators shall be required to mitigate orders through citing use of low odor seed varieties and other odor reduction methods as practicable. 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 And however that is compared to practical, I don't know. And um, that would need to be written in as a as a condition, I would think. Um, in your plan, you have a tracker. I'm sorry, what? Something under the shed, under the roof. What? Labeled extractor. There's an extractor under the in the pole vault building. No, there's not. Right, actually that's, that, so one of the, there's the after cultivation part of the, of the of odor issues, and then there's the whatever the processing, actually that was a question I had about sort of what level of processing manufacturing is, so I, I have this, there's a pole barn, and there's storage, I mean there's uh, shipping containers in it, and inside that is like where the stuff happens that isn't growing out in the field. So what's happening in there? What kinds of processing? What what is it? I don't I don't know anything about this. You know what the the way that, that when it goes from being in the field growing to where it's you're wholesaling it off to um, dispensaries. What's what's happening in the, in those buildings? It's dried and packaged. So just dried and packaged. There's not other processing or manufacturing tinctures or stuff like that. Not not in our plan. No. Okay. Okay. And is the drawing done? Um, <coughs> I have this image of the tobacco barns and like the you know things drying. How is the drying done? Is it? And I also have a dehyd fruit dehydrator. How, how does how does this kind of drying happen? Uh, it happens on racks. Uh, it's all taken down off of the stocks. It's not put up full. Mm -hmm. So it's all taken off the racks mm -hmm. and put on screens. And then it's there's a. Uh, a lower system or uh, uh, just sits there and dries and it's you trust that the humidity level of the air is good enough or do you have to have do heat it up or do other things to <coughs> drop make it sure that it's <coughs> certain dryness are we getting into intellectual property here <laughs> I mean are you trying to get the whole I'm trying to what I'm trying to understand is what odor, I'm thinking about odors 
and I'm thinking about Thanks. I'm thinking about odors and I'm thinking about <coughs> buildings and I'm thinking about what's the odor potential coming from those buildings. Right. And what's the method for dealing with those odor issues? There's the is odor issues of the growing, right. and then there's the odor issues of the processing. Right. So that's the that's I don't I don't I don't care. Mm -hmm. I just I mm -hmm. want to know sure. is it because I it's it seems to me if you take three thousand plants out in a field and you bring the stuff in to a building that it's more concentrated. Mm -hmm. So it seems like if there's this much odor out here, it's like concentrated into a smaller space. Okay. And so then, is there odor control from those buildings? Yes. <coughs> okay. Filtration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's All right. So there's a filtering. So there's something. so the building will have there'll be odor control related to the building. Correct. Okay. I had a, I had a question. Since I'm no no question. Sorry. Yes. We're, we go we're going to accept questions. Ed? new questions yeah. at the end of our deliberation. Oh, okay. I mean, we are asking specific questions mm -hmm. ourselves of people in relation to your home. No okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. John, on your plan, you have a 16 by 40 extraction. And there's a, a rectangular box. What is that? It's an extraction lab uh, that we may use in the future, but that's what it's called. We're going to be processing in there, meaning trimming and packaging. So that's part of the drying. Goes from those drying um, containers over to that extraction lab because it could be something we do in the future, but it's not in our plan now. And it's not in the plan, but it's not in the plan. Are we going to exclude that from the special permit, or do you want that included in the special permit? Well, you asked us when we right. showed up in June no, to give you one, everything out two. for five years, okay. Joe. So what I'm asking. So that's what we're giving you. Right. I understand that. That's what's on the picture. Right. And, and it's an extraction lab because that's what it's called from the manufacturer where it comes from. It has all of the safety features in it, which are fans, everything that's explosion proof, everything that could be used in the future. We're going to sit people in there now um, at tables and package for us. So I have the spec for that building, I mean, for that lab, it's basically a container, two containers put together. So. So just to address that, um, if there was additional proposed expansion, expansion of this, Special permit, they, they have to be a secondary special permit filed for. This doesn't include what we're addressing right now. So, did anybody have any other thoughts about questions specifically or some discussion about noise and odors? For me, so much of this is, gonna, is kind of speculative, it's really hard to tell. That's one of the things that um, the Board of Health was mentioning, right. how, hard it's ambiguous. how hard it is to measure. <coughs> if there were going to be complaints about it, it would be going to the Board of Health. Okay. And, and the, uh, I think what's also probable is that um, this would be something that would be happening for a particular period of time. Uh, a certain number of weeks rather than year round. Let's go on. Let's go on to F. Hazardous materials. That yeah, that was part of the question. So um, at the public hearing. Um, uh, John and Lisa addressed this by saying that this is an organic farm, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. That's great. However, um, to me, there are still uh, chemicals, pesticides, fertilizers, and fuels used even in organic farming that are allowed allowed under those state um, regs. So I'm just wondering about them being um, included. Unless they have absolutely no intention of 
Is that, I'm that so I'm going to actually ask you this. Do you have no intention of using any um, even organically listed chemicals, pesticides, fungicides, fertilizers, or fuels? None will be stored on the site. None will be stored on the site. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but they use put into the soil. But no. used. No, everything's in containers by the way. So, um, so just to clarify, so when you're growing these plants, you're not going to be using any any materials other than water and soil on them. It's Anything that's OMRI, everything has to be OMRI certified. Right, right. But even if they are certified, I'm wondering if our um, our, our bylaw isn't isn't suggesting that they're certified or they're not certified. Do, we are just calling for submission of a list, just of, a submission of, a list. of what's going to be used. Yeah. So that's part of the okay. part of the need here for the plan. Yeah. Yeah, and I think right because it says used or stored. used or stored used or stored, and because uh, you know we're right. Even if it's organic, if it's concentrated, it could be corrosive or it could impact the water supply or it could be whatever. Right. So organic it's, chemicals are chemicals. You know, be combustible. Yeah, and combustible. So it's useful that that'll be useful for, um, yeah, for for us to know and perhaps you know public safety folks or whatever to know if there were, you know, if there was a fire or if there was you had a, you know, you had a tank of. Uh, organically certified something, but that it, um, you know, which spread out over a field is fine, but in a whole concentrated dump could mess up something, you know. Um, anything on that? Any, anybody else have any thoughts on that? Okay, so G is driveways. Driveways. Driveways are fine thing. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Right. And then, yeah, they did ask, um, do you want to take up the waiver for traffic study? Um, um, signage, that seems fine too. So the buildings, um, the buildings should be consistent with the appearance of other buildings in Conway, not in not employing unusual color or building design. In other words, the idea was to resemble local agricultural buildings. It, it does seem to me that as submitted, these are resembling local agricultural buildings, because they are, in fact, agricultural buildings. Any other thoughts on that? I have a question on the 10,000 square feet. What What is the area of the two hoop buildings? They're 30 by 96 on the plan there, each. Would that be 28880? 2880 okay. each. Each. Okay. Um, so. I guess we got energy efficiency and water efficiency. Mm -hmm. Energy efficiency. Well, and there's the cultivation, there's the J. Well, it's the condition. Mm -hmm. And like any conditions about lighting. right. So it just it just re it just refers back to previous things that we have to deliberate <coughs> on. Um, energy efficiency. So as as we saw when they uh, talked about their plan, this isn't going to require much energy use. And what it is, they were suggesting would be covered by their solar capacity. Um, water efficiency. So this has come up a few times from concerned abutters. One of, one of the questions I had is that um, having that farm that I went on where the lights were, I was an irrigator of orange groves for a year and used, and there was drip irrigation, and there were sprinklers, and there were various kinds of irrigation. So I know you're going to, hopefully it's going to rain perfectly, and you're going to have, uh, you know, you'd have it rained on, but what's the, what's the irrigation plan for um, with drought? 
Is it big sprinklers? Is it drip irrigation? Drip irrigation. So you'll have like 3,000 pots and each of them will have a little thing in them that's... Um, as close to the soil as possible to stop, stop any type of evaporation. Okay. And so there'll be all kinds of tubing going between them. Would you be amendable to metering the water that you're going to take from the new well? I cannot find any good data for outdoor growing in Massachusetts. I don't think anything's been done. That's why there's not a lot of data. But it would be interesting to get some data. Make, make your sort of a model farm. I could probably get south here to the water district to put it in for you. We can absolutely look into it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but so drip irrigation is by nature efficient water use as opposed to like one of those big kind of sprinkles. Yeah, sound <laughs> Quack. They sort of quack. Rainbirds. Rainbirds. Spend a year okay. with them. Close and personal. I can clean them real quick. <laughs> Okay, so that's why because I don't think we did this. This is not applicable. In the in the um, in the applications, one of the things in the site plan is you the the I think right. there were I think part of the completion of the site plan site plan is now. once we have figure out the um um. Well, the, actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the property lines. But I, I guess the, the basically the distances between the um, the proposed establishment and all existing uses within a thousand feet of the property lines, and that there was some general pictures with you know the measurements like with the um, uh, aerial photo. Uh -huh. But I don't I don't I don't remember seeing a plan that shows you know the measurements out to the other <coughs> um, So what we're talking about is the uh, O in our bylaw for the last line, which says the site plan shall show the distances between the proposed marijuana establishment and all existing uses within 1,000 feet of the property lines of the proposed establishment. So I think what Mary's asking is that she's not sure that we have the this as complete yet. Yeah. yeah, I mean there's in the like there were there's an aerial photo with distance from certain things in it, but not uh, like a plan that shows you know like the, here's the property and yeah. here's say fifteen hundred feet out and here's the thousand feet out all that you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you like a circumference? Is that what you like to see with everything well, or just out? Yeah, I mean, it just, well, it's more, yeah, so if the property line, I mean, it, <coughs> I'm thinking of a, you know, a map, a map essentially, or a, a plan that sure. shows the property lines and then measuring out a thousand feet around all the property lines and then what all happens in those thousand feet. Mm -hmm. And it, did the bylaws say, that, I'm sorry, did it say thousand feet from our property line, or mm -hmm. thousand feet from the structures and a thousand feet parking. of the property lines of the proposed. <coughs> of the Just proposal. that we we need a, a plan of what's happening in those. So it's, so it's, the site it, plan has to just show us everything that's going on within a thousand feet from of the property. all of your borders of the property. Okay. Of, Okay. Not about, not of like oh, no, where no, you're no, doing the, well, the, 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 the building, the, the, but the property. Right. Not, not the proposed marijuana. The less is brought down. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so we did with that. So we move on to P, which Thank is you. change in license or owner. Um, what we're doing here is mimicking the state law, I believe. Mm -hmm. Putting the same conditions on, so I guess we need to know who the legal owners and applicants are, and are there any other parties involved in this, other than the two of you? No. No. Okay. We have our application. And um, additionally, so then that that goes right into Q, which is change of ownership. A special permit shall lapse upon any transfer of ownership or legal interest of more than 10% or changing contractual interest in the subject premises or property. So that seems like it. How does that get documented? 
How does that get done? Doesn't an LLC have to have more than two people? Or can you no. have a treasurer and a no, secretary? No. That's a good one. Not for an LLC. How does that get done? So John and Lisa fulfill the requirements for an LLC? Actually, they don't even have to be members. They're just managers. You don't know who the members are. Mm -hmm. That's what we well, know the who state the law says there's, if there's a change in ownership. I know that. Mm -hmm. Or legal ownership. Okay. What does that mean? Well, we'll I was asking again. you, you're the lawyer. <laughs> 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 no, wait, 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 council. Is that a question? Ask council. Ask council. If a change of 10% of council. membership would change and would be yeah, able we'll, to we'll cover that. You could ask current council that. We will. Um, Next piece of this is, uh, well, the host committee agreement, that's not up to us, that's up to the select board, which already happened. Um, is there anything more? Yes, the special permit will expire. The special permit will expire. No, we said five years. You asked me about changing. I did oh. ask you what this was. In our bylaw, we put five years, but okay. that was because I think the host agreement is typically You're right with years. the host agreement. Okay. So the bylaw was written as five years of the special permit to because to match the host community, community host agreement. But does it have to? Yeah, that's my question. We have to waive our own. We have to waive our own. Okay. All right. Do we have any other additional questions or clarify questions to ask of anybody? No? Do we want to? Okay, it's 715. Sure, yeah. Okay. So, um, <coughs> trying to um, not get to the rest of our agenda. <laughs> but we are going to open up the floor now for 15 minutes for people in the audience to ask specific questions. Um, I would prefer that they be new questions than what was raised in the public hearing. And Mike is Mike Kirkalonis here is met, is uh, modeling how to do this. Raise your hand in the chair and I'll say, please, please, we're recognizing you. So when you when you talk, can you state your name and address for the sure. record? Uh, Mike Kirkalonis, we're on the road. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to say just how disappointed I am with the town of Conway and their communication. I live on that road. I'm not that I'm opposed to this at all. Um, but I've signed up on the website four times. Today would be the fourth time to get notices about what's going on in town and meetings. And I didn't even know about this meeting, the previous meeting that they had. So I think that kind of, I know there's five households in my area that would have loved to gone, not to oppose it or be in favor of it or oppose it, but to know that it's there. Um, so I came tonight to learn about what the project is. This is the first time I've ever seen them or met them. Um, but listening, I had I, I have some concerns. I sent an email when, at the very beginning of this to Tom, our town administrator. Uh, has anybody ever brought up how close it is to the camp? And I, I didn't know that they had sold the land that's around the pond. Um, but I would like for you, Joe, to read that by the, the by bylaw. What it states is there a distance from where kids congregate? Yes, to the building from where children congregate. I can tell you that I grew up in town, as most of you know. That pond used to be loaded with kids. That field used to be used for softball. There was volleyball nets set up there at one point in time. My father was a police officer, and we used to have to go there all the time for incidents. There's nothing major, just stupid stuff, but it was used then. It sounds like it's being used a little bit now. So. Whether there's an easement or not, if our bylaw says where children congregate, and I didn't know this until I came to this meeting, where children congregate and they plan on using it in the future, it's been used in the past, it could be used in the future. I think you got to look at that really hard. We are looking. We are. We are. I think that's, I, I'm not opposed to somebody doing whatever they want to do on their property in general. I'm not one of those kinds of people. You have the right to do it, then do it. And if we meet, he meets our bylaws, then he has the right to do it by our town bylaws. But this one, okay, the, the is in my opinion. That when, when the Church of God bought the, the land on the westerly side of the road and the swing barn, they also had an easement to park cars and 
play softball, I guess. It have great. an easement, not had. Have. Right. Have. Have. Yeah. Yeah. Had and had. Yeah. The question is, does, does that, well, for me, the question is, does that put a burden on the property that was never intended to be there? And I don't mean that they can't use it, but the question is, for me is, can they stop the farmer from doing what he wants to with his property? I don't think that's what it you can. was intended to do. But you can. We can't stop him from going there, but can he stop us from... from so know? that's what we're going to talk to the legal counsel about. We definitely there, there, is a, there is a thing with the use about burden, excess burden. Because that's actually what it is. It's a burden on the land. But, but is it an undue burden? Okay, so, so that's what we're going to talk to the legal counsel about. Okay, so we have um, Mr. Gibson and Mr. Andy, and who's the other Andy. 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 Can you stand up, Andy? Oh, sure. Take Sorry, Andy Jaffe, a medical <laughs> room. Um, so I'd like to start by saying I think it's incredibly lame of the applicant to leave when a lot of these questions pertain directly to him. They don't, they're not required to stay. Yeah, I know. That doesn't matter. The point is it's a community, and if you're trying to communicate with people and, and alleviate some of the... Uh, you yeah, know, we, we actually, wait, here's, I want to say something. We're, we actually can't be talking like, what well, personality was. No, I'm not here's, 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 so one of the things that came up and that we didn't stop in the public hearing is um, comments about the personalities or behavior of the applicants is not something, we just went through our bylaw okay. and what we're paying attention to. So we're not interested, and we've heard, uh, we have okay. a stack of information that really we can't use in our deliberations. So if you have concerns okay. about the, if you have concerns this about the neighborhood, neighborhood yeah. if you have concerns about the neighborhood, if you have concerns about relationships within the neighborhood, I really, it's like what I said about you don't go to the select board and ask them to inspect your restaurant. You don't come to the planning board and, and talk to us about concerns in the neighborhood. If you don't know, talk to the chief of police, talk to the select board, talk to the cannabis, con cannabis control commission, talk, that's to, the not, talk to the applicant. Can I make a, yes. just, just ask, let me ask my question. Yes. Yeah. I know you guys like to talk, but I just wanted to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so um, I wanted to say, is there any record, and this is what I would have asked if he had stayed, is there any record of him having talked to Carlos or being aware of the nature of the easement when he bought the property? That's a pretty simple question. Did he know about that easement? Did he know he what it entailed? Has he talked to Carlos? Because that's about community relations, and it's that's what makes it fly or not. Well, that's all I have to say. Okay, um, you have I think, order, uh, Pastor, I think Pastor Carlos is next. Um, you know, my, my, I have a few concerns. Uh, first of all, uh, in, in relate to the relationship with Mr. Moore, uh, I think it becomes uh, public safety. Why do I say that? Because, you know, Mr. Moore for the past year and a half has been very, uh, I'll say it because this is my feeling, very hostile mm -hmm. in regards to me and many of the neighbors. And uh, not only towards me, but also to the people that I'm trying to hire so they could come and, and restore the camp. So why do I say this? Because right now he's being hostile and there's not a multi-million dollar, uh, you know, uh, cannabis farm right now. So I imagine when if that gets approved, I think the hostility is going to be even greater towards us or anybody around there and even us that we have the right of way in the Eastman. I don't know about you, but I don't want my children and the children going to be there knowing that there's electric fences in there, a ball gets hit uh, somewhere, they got to go and fetch it or they got to go around and, and get close to these things and they get electrocuted or they get shot or anything like that. So it becomes a public safety you know, to, to us and, and in that regards. And, and we, are, I, we are very concerned, not just me, but, you know, our whole board and the whole district, so. We have, we have received a number of comments 
from people who are concerned about these issues. And I, I, we, we're taking them seriously. They're not within <coughs> our jurisdiction as a planning board when we're applying the bylaw mm -hmm. to this decision. Mm -hmm. the, the people for whom this is a concern, that the jurisdiction is, James. is James. the police, our local police, the state police, the select board, sorry Bob, the select, Phil, the select board, as our town governing body, and the Cannabis Control Commission, who has not yet issued a license for this operation. To address Carlos's issue, now they're proposing an alternate security system. We could tell them not to do that, and they would be putting up a six-foot high fence. Is that what you're saying instead of, we, we thought this was, more complimentary. These three wires are probably not going to be visible. No, I, saying I, I'm just, I'm just saying, saying why go to the trouble and, and put in our, our neighbors and ourselves through that, you know, and instead well, of I'm that, saying the standard solution is a six foot barbed wire, not a barbed wire. No, it's, 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 it's just, it's just obeying the law. It's just obeying the law to try to stay there. We don't have a problem, like, like the gentleman said, if he wants to, you know, grow whatever he wants to grow, but we, there has to be obedience to the law as well and that protects us that don't care about those kind of things. You know, so we, we okay. So Peter, is um, next. I have a uh, name and address. Did you put my name? Yeah, we'll put list. your. Are you Lucy? Yeah. Um, first, are, are there? I, who you are? Peter Jeswell, Old Crooked Hill Road. Um, I'm assuming the planning. There are other sections of the Conway Bylaw that the planning board does have purview over and needs to. I'm assuming so. It's not just this bylaw that the planning board needs to needs to evaluate to make sure that this facility fits within the overarching bylaw. Like, is it a good fit in the town? Where we are. Are there are there other sections of the bylaw you need to pay attention to? For the the zone, there's. Well, section 63 is a special permit process. Yeah. You have to comply with other sections of the right. bylaw. Right. Right, and are you? Are you? No, I'm assuming you're looking at the other sections of the bylaw to make yeah, sure that like this the driveway. We even refer to it. That it has to comply with the bylaw, you know, the driveway bylaw thing. Yeah. Like and we refer to the hazardous. You know, like there's things you're not allowed to do in Conway Lake, like so. Um, that section. <laughs> 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 yeah, we that section. Um, and um, and we, yeah. So yes, there are other. Right, we we are responsible. Right, so the special permit has to. We you know, can't violate other parts. Right, okay. Right. And, and then, just Beth, to get back to your comment about what congregate means, mm -hmm. I don't think it says anywhere that you must congregate five days a week. No. It's your subjective definition of congregate when you say it has to be going on on an ongoing basis. I'm assuming the same way as when I heard, I heard when you say, well, the odor's only going to happen a few times. So you can't have, you know, you can't right. have it both ways. That's a Okay. Um, the process. What are the but one of the things that we're deliberating is about that and about about the meaning, the definition of this children part of the children congregating. Right. And what we spoke about earlier was <clears throat> that a lot of this particular part of our bylaw is very close to the state. It's pretty much a bit, virtually other, word other for distance. word. Yeah what the state law is. Except for the other Except congregate. for the other places children congregate. Which is yeah. right. Except for that. Which could be a mistake, but a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? It could be a mistake, but it could be a really good one. It could one, be so. a mistake. Mm -hmm. It was, there, this part of, when the, we wrote this bylaw, the zoning by the, the planning board wrote this bylaw. And we, we looked at the state law and we said, well, children congregate in other places than schools and whatever, and so that's why we, but we didn't come up with like a laundry list of all the possible places. Mm -hmm. We came up with that term, and now we get to reap the benefits of that and I, figure yeah. out what does that mean. I do know that it, in my thinking about this, when we wrote it, it was not like casual. It, again, the thing I mentioned, which is you have a party at your house and children come, that is not 
included in my mind, it was not included in my mind, that that was where children congregate. It don't happen to be you there. You need to let people ask their questions yeah. because yeah. you've limited the time for questions. Okay, who's next? Okay. All right, who's next? Phil's next. Phil's next. Phil's next. So, um, Phil Cantor, 12 River Street. Um, so I just wanted to address a couple of the points that you were deliberating on. The, the one was, uh, um, you, Mary, I, I, I thought that you, that I heard you sort of define a dichotomy between security being the state and lighting being the planning board or the town. And but I don't, I don't. If, what I but 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 it. Um, the, my only point was that the, the state regulations sort of talk about the purpose of lighting is strictly just for surveillance purposes. Right. Um, the 500.110K. Right. Um, yeah. And and so that's the purpose of it. So if they're not. Uh, yeah, the, so just consider that, that the state sort of talked about the purpose for the lighting, right. that you don't have to ad hoc that. Mm -hmm. The other thing was that the your odor conversation or deliberations, um, the, the state, the, the, our bylaw sort of, sort of begins with the except for outdoor cultivation. Right. So the, there's allowed to be, a, uh, for outdoor cultivation, you can have an odor at we the property that. limit. So um, other, uh, other than those minor points of clarification, I've been impressed with your deliberations and your thoughtfulness and your Gary's collegiality. Next. So, thanks. Gary's next. Gary's next. I'm next. Yeah. Do I stand up? Or? Sure. Do whatever you want. Gary Smetton, uh, Roaring Brook Road, Conway. I just, we thank you very much. I know this is hard. I've been on <laughs> boards and it's difficult, especially interpreting statutes or rules. Um, Your bylaw, our bylaw, says that your purpose is to protect public health, safety, general welfare. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's different from personality. The fact that someone has a bad personality, I don't think that's their problem, or like they just don't have good neighbors or whatever. But person, this is we're not talking personality. You've gotten in our statements that we submitted that have been submitted and the petitions that you got this afternoon, and I know you haven't had a chance to look at them. We're not talking about personality, we're talking about fear. We're talking about an, a treatment of people that affects their health, safety, and general welfare. Mm -hmm. And I think you can look at that section. It's in our bylaws. And, and, and number two, 3,000, this started at 300. You have the power to say, no, that wasn't what was intended. This town did not intend to have a manufacturing facility on this quiet, residential, rural town. It, it, and I don't think anyone here thought when they even voted for it, and maybe everyone here might have voted for it, but they didn't anticipate that with a 12,000 square foot addition going up. So this isn't what was intended, and this is way beyond the scope of what, and that's why everybody's here, by the way. So, okay. What size have kept you all home? <laughs> what kept us all home? Well, uh, I'll just say this quickly. I, I didn't even know about this until a week ago, the day I came here. No one notified me. I mean, as someone else said here, we didn't get notice. You'd think it's just about a Butters. This isn't just about a Butters. But Cornell, this affects the whole town, not just the whole Roaring Brook, but everybody. We all use Waitley Glen. We yeah. all ride. We use those trails. We yeah. use, it's all Can us. I respond to that? Sure. When we set the public hearing for this, we did what was legally required, which is publish legal notices, notify a Butters. We also sent a press release to the recorder, sent I got a notice into the visitor after their deadline that we were having a public hearing. I understand that there are issues about the town of Conway not adequately communicating in general. I feel like we as a planning board tried really hard to get the word out about this public hearing. I'm not criticizing the board. I'm not, sure not, not even close. What else you could have done? Okay. I'm, you guys have done what you had to do and the applicant <coughs> notified the people he had to, up, 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 to notify. I'm just saying this is bigger than just the butters and people here Absolutely. didn't appreciate and not just people here. We got 64 signatures we submitted. I mean, that's a lot of people to get over Christmas and New Year's weekends when people don't even want to talk to us. So <laughs> it's no, it's really hard. I know it's hard for you, but it's hard for us. And, and it's it isn't easy. And we find something out, and then it's our hearing yeah. about 
<laughs> but you're going to read about it. Well, what's harder for me is you, you passed the bylaw that said you wanted marijuana. And now it sounds like we're saying we don't want it. I'm actually going to go back to the bylaw, okay? Because I think there's a section of the bylaw that you didn't actually review. Any of these. I'm Susan Sutton, by the way. I'm married to this guy. And I live on Warren Brook with him. And we just had our 50th wedding anniversary party on Saturday night, and we had a great time. But in the middle of all that, we were still trying to work on this. Okay, so I'd like you to look at 11.1, okay? All right. Purpose and intent. It is the purpose of this article to promote public health, safety, and general welfare, and to support the availability of recreational marijuana in accordance with state law, to mitigate potential impacts to adjacent areas and the environment. This bylaw will re regulate the location of the site development to promote safe, attractive business areas, prevent crime, maintain property values protect and preserve the quality of residential neighborhoods and protect the safety of children. So what I'm saying is, um, if you start with the crime, I'm not, not saying that he himself is a criminal. You know, let's put that piece aside. But a place like that, there is ample evidence that criminals go to that place to try to steal the property. Their plants are worth millions of dollars. And if they're going to that place to try to for that many plants to try to steal some of them, they might think that the other houses on Warren Brook Road are easy targets. I mean, frankly, that puts us terrified. We're, talk about 1,000 feet, we're 500 feet from this property line, all right? So that's, that's a big concern for us. Mm -hmm. The other concern is property value. I mean, in Colorado, where they have had marijuana farms for a long time, um, homeowners who live within, who are live close to growing areas the property values go down not true. because if, no, yes. the statewide they goes go up. up. Goes well, up. I have I have article. No, statewide yeah. they go up, but the ho homes that live close to the <laughs> farm go down. Yes. Anyway, so I have this information that we've received in comments. Already. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that. But and so just one other thing, and that is also that um, uh, uh, we we have a quiet, secluded residential neighborhood. And it's not a place for a manufacturing facility. So that's my, my comment. Thank you for thank you for hearing me out. Lucy, um, um Lucy from Rumberg Road. I'm terrified, but I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about what you guys are helping us with and thank you all for your time and, and being here for us. Um sorry, I'm holding on to your chair. It's okay. <laughs> um I am the house that is the closest to their farm except for David, who is only very rarely there in the, the camp right before Carlos's big camp. I am one of the most vulnerable people, uh, location-wise, for smell. I am incurably ill, and I don't, I can't, you say, oh, it's only going to be for a little while. That's not what they're doing anymore. They're going to be planting 3,000 plants and then another 3,000 plants and it's going to be year-round before we know it. I think it's really fair to ask them, water, I want a study of the aquifers, smell, a study of what the odor situation is. And there is another one, but I, have, I can't remember it at this point. I'm really tired. It's too late. So what I feel like that's been happening is they'll sit there and they'll say, oh yes, we're going to do that. Like they both sat there and said that they were the only owners, but a neighbor told me, there are a lot of people investing. I just feel like, please for us, please go a little deeper. Insist that they do some studies. Insist that, that they really show you what the LLC is. Who's the financing behind it? I just feel like, you know, and then you all think that they're only going to plant get 3,000 plants and then they're going to put them away or something. That's not what I've been hearing at all. Our officer is standing there today because Kenny's concerned. I've spoken to him numerous times. There are numerous people here who are terrified of retribution. I also ask that you 
even though you only have this one set, and I'm also very concerned, like our water and our air, all that stuff, but, but also consider that we're the people who live there, we're the people who go by, we're the people who have to live with all of that. Why don't we put it at the home of one of these people who really, really want this? Why, why not? There are people who speak up. Select board people. They so badly want this. Put it at their house. He's going to make $3 million. The town supposedly, even according to Moore, is going to make about 50000 all of which is going to not go to really us. We're not going to get a better school out of that. So please think deeply. I just ask you, please consider, require them to make studies. I'm going to note that uh, we are at a little past 7.30, we're going to continue this for a while, at least another 10 minutes. James, I'm James, James Crawl. Um, I live on Green Street now, but when I first moved to Conway, almost 30 years ago, Nancy, <laughs> um, I was living on Roran Brook Road, and we owned it on the other end of Roran Brook, so I love that neighborhood. And I think all of us in Conway enjoy more than just our yard. Mm -hmm. We enjoy the town, the pond, and the, that area there is lovely. Um, the last time I was there, I felt uncomfortable for the first time. Uh, the, there was a, a threatening German Shepherd, and there was a presence there that I had not felt in Conway before, and I, I can't tell you, I mean, yeah. we shouldn't have to feel like that in our own town. And I can only imagine how it's going to be when there is $3 million laying there in a pile that this guy is going to want to protect and other people are going to get. Um, I'm also very concerned about my well, even on the other side of town, we all share the same aquifer and echoing what Lucy said, sometimes when we don't get rain, I get a little grit in my well and I'm worried about that. That's a huge amount of water they're talking to do that many plants. I mean, I know it's tri trickles, <coughs> but I really think that should be looked at. And the thing that he's growing, the product that he's growing is for recreational use. I'm a medical user. That's not how it's done. You can't sell to medical people that might have bugs or mold or something. It's done indoors. And so I would suggest that as an alternative, he should do an indoor system, which eliminates a lot of these other issues. It can be locked down <coughs> and it is not going to impact the neighborhood in the same way. It be more of an investment for him, too. I believe Sue is next. David I'm just reading a note that I sent to the planning board. I am in no way opposed to having cannabis grown or sold or used in Conway. For the most part, I've been unaware of the controversy over the proposed marijuana farm on Roaring Brook Road until the past 10 days. Last weekend, I was at a 10-person dinner party <coughs> where others were discussing the neighbors' petitions, urging that the owner, owner's request uh, to establish such a farm be denied. Three of the ten, so there was just a general conversation. Three of the 10 guests present, all lifelong or long-term, decades-long residents of Conway, none of whom lives on Roaring Brook Road, said they were physically afraid of the owner and the proposed establishment and feared retribution if they were to state their opposition publicly or sign the petitions. I was just amazed. I mean, I couldn't believe that that, that feeling in terms of solid, thoughtful people would be, would be around. To hear that the owner of the proposed project has over many years instilled fear of mayhem in <coughs> neighbors, and apparently now many others I hear, um, would seem reason enough to deny his petition. Uh, Dave DeLuca, Roaring Brook Road. Um, I would like to just point out um, that one member of the board seems to rather laughingly dismiss the objections of the townspeople on the basis that they voted for it. Um, not everyone was here for that vote. We're new to Conway and my wife and I never voted for this. And we are directly affected because we live on Roaring Brook. 
that, I did I don't believe I was laughing, but my, I was trying to make the statement that everybody... Ron, would, smile. I, I, some days it's hard to get up. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody it's wanted crazy. marijuana. If they didn't know what they were voting for, they got conned by big business. Yeah. And now they're not happy with it. I mean, when we're on a situation, we're not happy with it. We're not happy with it. We're not happy with it. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Which is we're dealing with state law. We are dealing with state law. Right? This, this is I, I'm simply pointing out that not everyone affected voted to legalize pot in Massachusetts. So why don't yeah. you just well, protect good. us really well, make these studies happen, well, help us. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. Just next. a quick one, because yeah. you mentioned that oh, okay. Samantha Fabian of Ron Rogue. Mm -hmm. um, you said the Cannabis Commission, he doesn't have, or he has to get the license. Cannabis Control How Commission. How does this work? If he cannot get that license, does it, is it done? Like, if they do not give him that license? do it without a license. So really, station. if we all band together, and we go to the Cannabis Commission, um, but, might, but you do have a, a threshold of responsibility to protect yes. our neighborhood and our property values and yes. our safety. So, and I understand that you take that seriously, but I wanted to be sure that you look at 11.1 .1 in addition it's to looking at all the others. It's not personality. It's not personality. It is it's not safety. Personality. No. Safety, safety is safe. So safe. safe. Personality. We're terrified. So thank you for that. Thank you for taking it seriously. Yeah. Your, to your point. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, no, to, to operate a marijuana establishment in Massachusetts, you have to have a license from the state, you have to have a host community agreement from the host community, and you have to follow any laws of the town. So if the town has zoning bylaws related to it, then you have to follow whatever the zoning bylaws say. So we're dealing with the town zoning bylaws part of it. There's a whole other process of the licensing related to the state, and the host community agreement has already been arranged with the select board. That's already been done. And then um, one of the people that also signed one of the petitions uh, brought up to me something about it being commercial. Does that, I, I don't, really don't know, I'm not really educated. Does that have anything to do with, no, because it's a pot farm, it's being called a farm? I'm not the, the, well, one of the things about marijuana that is different from growing other plants in this state is that marijuana is not considered agriculture. Cultivating marijuana is not considered agriculture. Hmm. If this was for the purposes of zoning, so if so if he was proposing 3,000 basil plants or hemp or hemp or plants, hemp. there would not be requirements. Then they are exempt from various zoning things and various laws because it's agriculture. But marijuana, even though it looks a lot like a plant growing, <laughs> is not considered agriculture, and so. Um, so it is, so it's, and in terms of commercial, I mean, in terms of the rest of our bylaw, you could, I mean, if somebody wanted to put a business there that was a, we, you could put a huge building and manufacture something there, and our bylaw, our zoning bylaw, what is it relates to businesses in the rural residential agricultural area, zoning area, zone, is that we can't have more than 15 employees on site at a given time, nor more than 50 customers on site at a given time. We have no limit on size of buildings. We have no limits of other things. We, are, we have tried to bring zoning bylaws to the town to say, hey, do we want to do some limiting of that? And have not been able to yet, are still looking at the potential, but there's nothing, we have, there are specific limits of size related to this bylaw, but in general, if you wanted to put a, um, you know, cotton candy manufacturing plant with a 30,000 foot building on that property, and you fit all the other, and you didn't have more than 15, it was all done by robots, and you didn't have more than 15 people making cotton candy, you could do that. It smells too much. <laughs> well, you know, it's not the smell. Too bad. Right. <laughs> okay, let's take a few more questions and then we're going to close. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can I say something? Yes. Okay. Okay. Please state your name. In uh, I'm Catherine McCall. I live on uh, South Deerfield Road, um, married to Walter. Um, so, this is personality related. I don't trust that Moore is going to uh, follow his own plan. So, my question is if who is in charge 
of making sure that he is in fact not using chemicals that he's not supposed to, is not using more water, the noise level what it's supposed to, who is, who is in charge of making sure that he does that? You guys. And if he's not doing it, who, what happens? There was floodlight strength light, stadium strength light in my corner speaking to your point. We're, who do I go to if that happens again? So, so who is oh, the for no, number one, who is in charge of zoning? Sure. The zoning the zoning board of, you know, it's for, it's Franklin County, really. No. no so yes, board. an enforcement. I, I think the right answer is there's a state law. And that would be enforced by the state. We tried to write into our bylaw things that were we thought were important to the town, so that enforcement could be at a local level. But with, with this being a local bylaw, we can call the building inspector and say go over there. If we didn't have a local bylaw, then you would have to call the state and say come out here and check on. But you could put restrictions and conditions. I think you brought, someone already mentioned that. And if he violated those conditions, someone here could notify you yes. and there could... Okay, so if you were, if you guys did get a number of complaints mm -hmm. related to whatever, what then are you able to do in order to, you know, take care of the problem? We can certainly call the building inspector if it, you know, it's an enforcement issue, if something needs to be, if he violated some of the conditions of the special, I guess we're assuming he has the special permit, and it has a number of conditions. Uh, the ones we've talked about, you can't cut the trees down. You, know, you need to leave all of the uh, vegetation there that, that's blocking the view. If he started cutting trees down, then we could, the state could do it if they had it in their law, but we have it in our, in our law. That, that uh, you know, you know, if we had in our order of conditions that he couldn't change the, the vegetation, then we would be responsible. Okay, so the building inspector that. goes and, and says, okay, you're using chemicals you're not supposed to, or you're chopping down trees, or you, you know, the noise is too much, and he continues to do whatever it is that he's doing. Mm -hmm. Can you guys rescind the permit within? Sure, I yes. believe we can. Yes. And could you give the same example? For it's like odor, so it's not, it's more vague, or I don't know how to say it. Okay. Odors, what would, what would happen? Odor is order? very subjective. Yeah. The Board of Health also has jurisdiction. So they the would come in that example? We haven't worked that out. We, have to, we have to keep working. Yeah, we're, I'm really, really concerned in regards to the odor. Um, not, not only f you know, for our neighbors, but we're going to be bringing kids and use it all the time. That this is going to become a problem because we're going to become liable. If any of those kids, they get sick, or they get high, or anything like that, and we, we just can't afford somebody suing us because somebody else's next door is growing marijuana. So I don't think it's fair to, to us and to anybody here. We're gonna take one more question, and then we're going to actually um, probably adjourn our meeting <laughs> until our next meeting, which is January. The third Thursday. 16th, the third Thursday of the month. You all tell me if we need to reserve this room again because our normal meeting is held in the town offices where not this many people are yeah. okay. To that point, um, when do you make a decision? When we're done deliberating. We have to deliberate. We have up to. And when we get information from legal counsel, when we get further plans, we don't have a set date of when we're making our decision. And we're taking our time. I'm glad you're taking your time. We, we have 90, we have 90 days to that. answer your question. We have 90 days to close of the hearing. Is there a way to close last time? Get last notified when you need to make a decision? We, well, well here's, we, here's the way a planning board meetings work, along with every other open meeting law related meeting <coughs> in Conway. It gets posted on the Glastian bullet board on the outside of the town hall mm -hmm. within 48, at least 48 hours ahead. Um, we are, we okay. have um, meetings on the 16th, the 1st and 3rd. Thursdays, we this will be on our agenda until we're done, until we're done with it. Yeah. So uh, that's you know, in terms of you can go and make sure and see that it's on the agenda. But basically, we're going to be talking about this till we're done, and that's when our meetings happen. 
So if you want to be in on the discussion, bring your knitting. <laughs> I have a quick follow-up to that. Wait, 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 wait. Just, you mentioned the agenda. Where is, where is the agenda posted? Um, as I said, all, all meet, posted meetings that, to meet open meeting by the open meeting law are posted on, if you go into the town office building, there's a big glassed in sort of bulletin board with a bunch of papers stuck on it. Okay. That's the official posting place. You're always welcome to also check in with us, but that's where it gets legally posted. And sometimes it's more than 48 hours ahead, sometimes it's just close up to that. Yeah, we can the website as well. Well, we can, and it's on the website, oh, really? but you can also, I mean, we can guess it's that it's going to be part of planning board discussion until we're done. So, yeah. Walter. Walter, and then we're going to move Thank you. Uh, Walter Goodrich, um, Group 116. Um, I think it was important and great that Mary you try to get some specific information on the odor control. Is it possible for the planning board to um, stipulate, well, for example, he said filters. Well, what kind of filters? Um, uh, is that part of your um, mandate or power to get pretty specific about technical aspects I, like that. I don't know. I mean, I know that for um, indoor indoor cultivation, it's not allowed to have odors outside the building. And outdoor cultivation has never been done in this state, and there isn't, there aren't regulations. Uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out is does indoor working in a store in a shipping container lavish whatever it is drawing stuff does that constitute being indoors and therefore there should be no odor on the outside of that that's a good question that boy that, that there's the field growing it in the field factor but then when it's out of the field in the <coughs> building should you be not able to smell anything and that's something i don't we have to get more information about i don't know but in terms of um yeah, quality of filters and capabilities of filters, and I mean, I guess we. I mean, I guess the standard isn't, you know, whatever filter you want to use. The standard is if when you stand outside and there's, it's like in there, can you smell it? I agree. Mm -hmm. I just so have you one more quick question, if it's okay, Ben. It yeah. Thank one you. more Thank question. You. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the conservation commission who has the power to ask applicants to hire consultants to answer certain questions. Yeah. Is it within your power to hire, ask the applicant to hire consultants? That's what I was to, trying to to to, uh, to calculate the amount of water such a system would use, and to design a system or review a system proposed by the applicant. Do you have the power to ask him to hire consultants? Not in our no, we can do that. Oh, we can do that. Can do that. Yeah. Can do that. So we could. We're not, we're so you mean a, so water, water use, right. and I mean, odor, odor. And light. Yeah. But the people, there are people who study these things. Yeah. How can That's you make what I was trying to ask. Can we study the aquifer? We can, we can yeah. hire, make them hire we somebody. We actually voted uh, chapter fifty-three, D one half, which allows us to collect fees from people and use them to hire consultants. They pay for it. We we pick the consultant, they have to pay us. Right. Like that's, that's what, what we're talking about with the cell tower. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be doing the cell tower, yeah. cell tower. Exactly. That's what we did last year for the so solar. The, so the concerns are water use, smell, and I had and light. blood lights on my corner at 3 a.m. I wasn't feeling well. And light pollution is a big issue it's around a huge the world. Issue. So light and the, but, and it, but it was like coming into my home. From that property? Mm -hmm. Yes, from the corner. It was like stadium strength lights. It was just he, unbelievable. Did he, you think he did it? I have lights. no idea. There was a car. I watched it for about 10 minutes, and then there was a car I, that came by. I, okay. <laughs> so we've, we've heard a lot of concerns. Thank you very much. We've, we've really Thank you very much. Very, very hard job. We're gonna, uh, yes, uh, you know, we are elected officials. If people want to talk to us about running for this office, <laughs> <laughs>